Aloha class! This video I wanted to chat about some union avoidance practices that a company might do. Now there are several things that a company can do to decrease those chances that the employees will want to form the union. I want to talk about six specific practices that, can, that a company can adopt to decrease those chances. Now for the first practice has to do with pay. Not only um, do above market wages and benefits potentially increase performance and decrease turnover, but it also decreases the likelihood that employees will want to unionize. The second practice is to promote more employees from within and to do it often. Now people like to feel that they are progressing and that there's a chance for growth and advancement. The third one is to conduct cultural audits, which provide managers a picture of what the company actually needs. Attitude surveys also provide a way for employees to feel they're being listened to. The fourth is to offer job rotations and training programs. Job rotations help reduce burnout, which can lead to people leaving their jobs or feeling trapped and hopeless. Now the fifth one is to share informa information with employees about the state of the organization. Companies that practice open book management are more likely to earn the trust and commitment from employees. Now the last, the sixth one that I wanted to talk about is the organization should make their, de their desirable working conditions. <clears throat> this means having appropriate and sufficient lighting, ergonomic workplaces, and a non-hostile work environment. So those are six practices that can help avoid union. Now a participative management style profit sharing plans and alternate dispute resolution procedures are also offered um, to counteract those long established union goals of improved wages and working conditions. <clears throat> now, employer tactics opposing unionization is another thing I wanted to just very briefly mention. Now, employers use a two-pronged campaign to fight unionization. First, whenever it's possible, employers stress the favorable employer-employee relationship they're, they're experiencing in the past without a union. <clears throat> so employers might emphasize an advantage in wages and benefits or working conditions that the employees may enjoy in comparison to those provided by the union or by organizations that already have a union. Now second, Employers emphasize an unfavorable aspect of unioniz unionism, including strikes, the payment of union dues and special assessments, and published abuse of members' legal rights, Now, along with any false promises made by the union in the course of its campaign. Now, union rules on member conduct are emphasized to the employees. Employers may initiate legal action should a union member and or their leader engage in unfair labor practices during that organizing effort. Lastly, with, within the limits permitted by the Taft-Harley Act that we discussed earlier in the semester, employers can express their views about the disadvantages of being represented by a union. However, when counteracting a union campaign, managers must not threaten employees with loss of jobs or reduction of the other employment benefits if they vote for a union. Nor may employers offer new or improved benefits or higher wages as a means of getting employees to vote no for a union. <clears throat>